Hey everybody and thanks for stopping by the channel. I'm Todd and this is Sweet Tea Guitars. Welcome to episode 8 of the Ultimate Telecaster build. Alright you guys, when we left off in the last episode, I had my body sealed up nice, my bindings installed. All around this front edge right here, I don't have any gaps. I'm great with that. There's a couple of little imperfections right here where either my router bit got off or something like that. I knew I may have an issue right here at the jack hole. But I'm going to fill that. The stuff I'm using is a 2K product that dries really fast. It's called U-Pole dolphin glaze it's kind of like bondo but it's meant for filling really small scratches or any kind of surface imperfections we're going to mix some of this up i'll spread it on there it'll dry in 15 20 minutes i'll be able to sand it we'll be moving ahead with this thing before we take to that though i want to make sure i'm clean i know i'm sanded to the level i want to be and we've got some more sanding work to do on this thing anyway once the uh once the putty goes on there and I'm gonna wipe the entire side to make sure I don't get any grain bleed or anything like that through my paint. I don't wanna be able to see any of that. Our first order of business is to fill this grain. We'll let that dry. We'll sand the sides and the back for that matter up to 360 once again. Anyway, let's get some of this stuff mixed up and get this spread on here. And I'm gonna mix small batches of this stuff at a time because it does cure pretty quickly. Very, very little hardener with this. That's more than enough. This is the best filling putty I've ever used in my life is this Dolphin Glaze. This stuff is phenomenal. All right, I've got a little blade right here. I'm gonna hit these spots first. And you wanna make sure you squeeze this down into that gap. And I won't need any more than this, I don't think, unless I run out of time. I'm going to hit this end grain with this stuff, too. This will get down in there and assure us that we get a nice, smooth finish for the paint. Uh, the one thing I like about this U-Pole product, it sands like butter. All right, you guys, it's been about 15 minutes or so. I'm going to go ahead and take some of the Super Acelix 360 grit with a soft interface pad on my sanding block. And we're going to go ahead and make certain that we've got this back nice and sanded and flat like it needs to be. I'm going to grab some Super Acelix 240 grit to deal with the first little part where we start on these sides. And I'm going to use a hand pad for this. I'm not going to take it all the way with this. I just want to knock down any ridges. You want to make sure you're using a pad, you guys. I can't stress that enough. Any kind of paint work, especially if you're going for a high gloss finish, your finger impressions will show up. I've got all that excess putty sanded off here with 240 grit. What we're going to do now is I'm going to change over to 360. We're going to get this back nice and flat. We're going to make sure our sides are like they need to be. We're going to work on the top as well. Then we're going to tape this thing up and get ready for some paint work. So I'm going to start by getting these sides up to 360. And I'm going to start on this end or this side of my neck pocket right here. And all I really want to do is get rid of those 240 scratches that I've made. As a general rule, you guys, when I think I'm done sanding, I'm probably about halfway there. All in all, I've probably got about 10 hours in just sanding work. So if that gives you any indication of how long it actually takes, but I'm telling you guys, you will thank yourself later. So I'm taking this soft hand pad now and sanding any of these areas I know that are gonna be contoured, like right here on my relief carve on the back of the cutaway, my belly carve. Now, we're gonna move to our hard interface pad on this block. This is just like a sheet of acrylic with Velcro on it that holds the sandpaper. And I wanna hit the flat parts of the body with the grain. All 
All right, so there's the sides and the back pretty much taken care of. I'm gonna wipe this down and get most of that dust gone. Now on the front, since I'm dealing with a, a flat surface, I can use my soft interface pad, but you don't wanna bear down too hard. Just let the weight of your arm be as much pressure as you apply to this. I've got 90% isopropyl alcohol in this bottle. I'm gonna put some gloves on you guys because I don't want my finger oils contaminating the surface of this body and we'll wipe it down again before we actually spray it. But I got some tape up work to do and I don't want my finger oils inhibiting the adhesion of the tape. So we'll just spray this rag down with some isopropyl. I'm gonna hit my sides first. And you guys, this is so, so important. Anything you've sprayed in your shop, um, especially things like Armor All or WD-40, anything that puts a mist into the air can cause you massive issues when it comes to paint work. So you really want to pay close attention to this. And you can see this is going to be a beautiful guitar. That is just lovely. So what we're going to do now is I want to run some vinyl fine line tape around my binding. You want to go around here and make sure that you burnish this tape down. Don't use anything hard because that may have a tendency to want to stretch it. Just use your finger. Instead of having to go through a bunch of problems on the tape up for the top itself, I got myself some masking film right here. And this is like transfer tape. Now we're going to tape up the neck pocket so I don't get any overspray. I do not like having any kind of contamination or anything like that in the neck pocket. So we're going to tape this up. I got my front taped off. I got fine line all around my binding. I'm happy with it for the most part. I think everything's going to go great. I decided that what I'm gonna use on this thing is root beer candy. And um, I don't know how well you guys will be able to see this. I'm gonna pan down so I can get it in just the right light and let you guys see this color right there. So it's a brown red with a ton of pearl in it. I think that is gonna be completely complimentary to the top. I thought about going copper, but it was a little light in my opinion. The black cherry, I personally got to thinking, and I mixed some up at work, but I got to thinking that it's going to look black from a distance. And I wanted the pearl to be the focus of this thing, not black. All right, you guys, so I got all my stuff out. I'm set up and ready to spray some paint. We need to wipe this body down again with some type of wax and grease remover, whether that be isopropyl alcohol, and that's what we're going to use in our case. We don't want to get our fine line tape too wet. That's the first stage. The second stage is to take a tack cloth. This is basically cheesecloth coated in a tackifying agent. And you don't want to bear down real hard. What this is doing is grabbing any particles of anything left on the surface and it's taking those away. All right, you guys, so I'm not going to film myself painting this because of overspray on my camera. I'll cover it up as soon as I get through spraying the sides and getting this burst put on the back. I will uncover the camera, we'll come back, and I'll explain to you guys exactly what I've done. All right, you guys, welcome back to the video. I've spent the last four days working on the telly, and I got the clear coat sprayed on it this morning. 
the first round to clear. And there we are, you guys. I got a beautiful glossy surface on the back. I sprayed that burst on there, and I'm going to tell you guys all about that in just a minute. The front, I can still see the grain through the clear coat, but that's all right. I've got plans for that. As it stands right now, though, we got a really nice tight line where our binding's at. I am super happy with that, and that color turned out so awesome. That is rosewood pearl paint. And let me tell you guys the story behind that. I mixed up some root beer, but it was a little bit too brown and not red enough in my opinion. I think it needed a little bit more of a deep red tone to it. So I ended up looking through all these color chips I have at work and I mixed myself some color called rosewood. It's pretty much a deep reddish brown pearl and it's got a ton of pearl in it, you guys. It's almost all pearl. And it looks so heavenly under that clear coat. I am so blown away by it. I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with how the burst turned out. Well, I did spray the root beer pearl on that guitar, but I was completely unhappy with the burst. So in true sweet tea style, I sanded it all off there. Well, knowing I was in the middle of a bunch of paintwork, I have my cameras bagged and ragged, which all that means is I had them protected from any overspray that may have been flying around the shop. I didn't film any of that. You guys pretty much know what I went through to get to that point. You've seen that. You've seen me do it before on video. I ended up using a paint gun for the first time, and I will be filming a complete series on guitar paint and I will tell you guys, after doing it with the paint gun, I'll never go back to an aerosol cam when I'm trying to do any kind of detail work like that. For clear, I use Spray Max Glamour Clear 2K in an aerosol can, so I did use aerosol clear. But once I get all that used up, I've got four or five cans of that here in the shop. Once I get that used up, I will be using a paint gun pretty much exclusively. The fact that the grain showing through on the front tomorrow afternoon, once I'm sure that clear is cured, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to level sand, wet level sand that body and get everything flat and nice and smooth without going through that clear or that paint. I'm going to lay down two more coats of clear on that guitar. That's all it's got on it now is two coats. I don't want the finish getting overly thick. I don't like that plastic feel. In the next video, what we're gonna do, I'll get that body level sanded. We'll shoot two more coats of clear on it. I'll level sand it, polish it again. Then we're gonna start the assembly process, get the neck glued in, do all the fret work. We'll get the tuners and the electronics installed, make sure everything fits like it's supposed to. Wire that thing up, put some strings on it. It may be two or three more videos before we get to that point. I'm just letting you guys know what I have left to do on it. Don't forget about the giveaway I'm doing here on the channel. I'm giving away a set of IsoTunes Link 2.0s and a boom mic. I'm doing a giveaway every month from now to the end of the year. In order to be entered for that, you have to subscribe to the channel and you need to go leave me a comment. Let me know you want those headphones on the giveaway video, which is the featured video when you enter my channel here. So you'll see it right there. It says Sweet Tea Giveaway down at the bottom, February. The title of the video is Isotunes Link 2.0. So you guys will see it when you come into the channel. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay up to date as I release the rest of the videos for the telly, as well as everything else I got planned. Don't forget to head over to Geo's channel, give him a subscribe and a like, leave him some comments, and stay on the lookout for the first video in the Les Paul Dilemma series. That video is coming to Geo's channel here shortly. We have started that build already, you guys, so stay on the lookout for that. I'll see you in the next video, and as always, peace and love.